Hi, Andrea Strang here at Gallery 222. Actually, I am not in the gallery today. I did a little sneak vacation with hubby, uh, but I still wanted to meet with you. We are here for a virtual table talk. So it is the last week of this amazing show. So I want to remind everybody, because I hear it a lot, people come in thinking it's the, uh, you know, it's the last show, it's the, the last show and it's the this show. So we're switching it over next Saturday, this coming Saturday. So please come out and see. It's such a strong show. This is Jeannie Gunther's room. This is who we're going to talk about today. Her, her room looks so cool because it's all the black and white. And, um, you know, with the white walls, it's just a really cool experience. So we're there Wednesday through Saturday, 11 to 5. So please come out before Saturday to see the show. But let's get talking to Jeannie. Let's welcome Jeannie Gunther. Hi, Andrea. How are you? Hey, Jeannie. How are you? I'm great. Good. Did I did I rouse people enough to come out and see your, your room? I think you did. I, I so. do. Yes. I hope so. So I have known Jeannie, let's give a little background, since 2016, I worked with you on my first show. That's I mean, right. I had no idea what I was doing and you were fabulous to work with. You were um, the president of the um, DVAL, so Delaware Valley Art League. So um, you did a group show, and here's pictures of it. It's I great. It. Wow. When people, I should say, this happened in 2016, before any of the nonsense is happening now. But this is um, Look at the crowd. It was, quite a crowd. It was such, and it was such a successful show. Well, it was so exciting because a fellow artist called me to tell me that a new gallery was coming to Malvern. And she said, and I gave the owner, Andrea Strang, your name. So maybe you two can get together and, and do something. And it was it was oh. so exciting. And to think five years later, and I have to I congratulate you on your, your well-deserved success. It's it's phenomenal. Thank and your you. your enthusiasm is still um, all the way up here. Yeah, it is. You know why? Because I work with people that I want to work with. Like anybody who has attitude or anything. I just, I, 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 you know, so it makes, I'm still enjoying it because of people like you. It's, it's just as simple as that, you know, well, uh, but I do want to give a shout out to Delaware Valley Art League because I actually always send people over there who are just coming out. They're trying to get their footing in the art world. Don't you feel like that's a great, um, organization for, for it, uh, absolutely it's it's just the benefits for especially a new artist uh -huh. who has never shown their work before the the opportunities to uh be juried into exhibitions to sell their work um to get the recognition that they deserve right. and um and then also to meet other artists Mm -hmm. to um, uh, every month we have a demonstration and a workshop. So it's a wonderful place for new artists. Yeah. And, so it, and those that have been around a while too. Yeah. yeah. No, and I feel like, you know, sometimes um, people that are older are technically emerging artists because they've had like one or two careers before that and now they're dedicating it to art. So, um, so I think that's also a, a great place to start. It's a, it's a way to gain collectors um, and also figure out the price points because I don't price the work. Yes. So with you, with like the Delaware Valley Art League, securing walls and putting your, your art on walls and with prices, it kind of, it all, it, it's actually such a great learning ground. I, I it's can't invaluable. say about it. It's invaluable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And great and art. And they use it as a springboard to other uh, galleries and other art sales in the area. So it, I'm mm -hmm. I'm just a huge proponent of the Delaware Valley Art League. I love it. Yes. So now you we have your collection of charcoals. I know you also work in oil. 
Yes. Can you explain your journey? Um, and you know what I love that artists they 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 go in and out of different things. Uh, so tell us about your journey. Well, I um, majored in oils at Tyler, and I I struggled with it, and I didn't like what I was producing. But I always drew every single day, and um, I just love that. And one day I shifted, I said, let me shift to something that is going to provide me more texture and um, deeper values. And that's when I discovered charcoal. And my work then took on a different meaning. Instead of just a sketch, they actually, the pieces actually became finished pieces. Oh, oh. And oh. Um, and they were very well accepted. So I thought I'm just going to continue with this. Yeah. No, yeah. I love it. Uh, you know how much I love your black and whites. So let's start talking about like your, you know, we have five pieces to discuss. Right. So uh, let's start with in. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, this piece started out as something completely different. I had the uh, crow and the nest on a branch. And I said, this isn't working. I started just fiddling around with the background in different textures and all of a sudden it became uh, the hollow. And um, I added the red string um, based on some of the Japanese and Chinese fables uh, regarding that. Um, it, it basically is an invisible thread to all the people you are to meet in your lifetime. Oh, and I that's just, beautiful. Yeah, I thought the meaning was great. And also, um, some people can wear red threads um, to uh, as a sign of their um, strength and connection and protection and their faith. So there's multiple meanings, and I do use it a lot. Oh. Yeah. yeah, and the, and the color is just enough to uh, pull people into the the picture. Mm -hmm. it, draws, oh, it draws the viewer in. Yeah. yeah, I agree, and it doesn't take from the composition. It adds yeah. so much. So, is it the perspective? Am I getting this right? Like it's the you know it's inside the tree looking out. Is that yeah? Okay. yeah. Which is you know it's totally made up. I'm sure crows <laughs> don't build nests like this and they certainly don't build them in the hollow of a tree but, but it's working i love it it's like it's like it's a little window yeah 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 so cool i love that very cool so our next one is this herbs apples tomatoes oh my oh i love this one yeah yeah well, tell um, us your crows i love your crows go ahead this is um i started drawing a still life mm -hmm. using things that I have in my own kitchen. And I put the crow in um, as a touch of whimsy. Um, mm -hmm. A number of years ago, I was in Ireland uh, queued up for the ferry and it was pretty boring. And a couple of crows outside the car caught my attention and they were actually trying to um, smoke a discarded cigarette. So, um, I just got my sketch pad out and started sketching and I was hooked. Yeah. Oh, so, that's great. Yeah. That's I just think they're fun. Artist. You're always locked and loaded with something in your handbag yeah. to start to get it down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 oh, I love this. I do love it. I actually had a client come in and just love the, in this particular painting, love the eye. It almost like a twinkle, had a twinkle uh, in his eye. Yeah. His eye or her eye, I don't know which. <laughs> I don't either, but I do I do try I do try to do that. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. I love it. I love the form of the apples. It just really is beautiful. And again, there's that just touch of color yeah. that just like you're saying draws people in. Mm -hmm. I love it. Love it. Thank so you. then this next piece is called the flower arranger. Now, this is one of your bigger pieces. You can't really quite get the scale of it, but it's I believe it's 24 by 18. Mm -hmm. and I think it really is. It's beautiful. It's just I love the size of it, too, with that tall vase. Yeah, this is um, basically working with composition and the detail and 
um, value structure and and then the touch of whimsy adding the crow and and then removing some of the um, sunflowers out of the vase as if the crow had um, been a little mischievous. So yeah, um, <laughs> I love that. I think that's cool. And then you really do. I mean, it's, it's got to be hard to work with such a uh, scaled down palette of colors. I mean, you're really just working with the, the, the lights and the darks. Yeah. But you capture that whole, um, the, uh, the, the window, the, the sun coming in the window is really cool. How you right. capture right. that. Yeah, that's a compositional device inside, outside. And mm -hmm. um, I, I do love to use that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Well, here's a question. How do you decide where to put the color and the color you use? Like, how okay. do you decide that with that? Yeah. Well, with the red string, that's self-explanatory. And then in one of the other um, pieces we're going to see today with the eggs, um, Robin's egg blue is my favorite color. And mm -hmm. so that just works out super great. And it, um, uh, yeah. eggs, again, that, that's uh, self-explanatory. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and it just, to me, it just looks so sharp against the black and white. Yeah, no, I agree. So this is called Hidden Away. Yeah. And um, yeah. I just think this is just fabulous because I, um, but you do have a piece, I forget the name of it. Um, you have a piece where you didn't color the eggs. Right. So, and that works too. So it's just a matter, um, like when do you make that decision? Do you make it starting out or you just kind of, that's like the last thing you decide on? The color. That's that, that's a good point. When do I make that decision? Because what I really do try to do is get out of my way, get out of my own way and let the piece work. Um, okay. It usually tells me. Yeah. The, the one that you're talking about. Oh, yeah, that one, yes. yes. I just didn't think the eggs needed color. Yeah, I don't think so. They actually yeah. glow. They're beautiful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that is that is beautiful. Now I do, and again, it's it's harder, I think, sometimes to work with such a limited palette, and you just do these so well. You know, you just it's not longing um, for color. Do you know what I mean? Well, like, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. I um, I, I just love working in black and white. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, yeah, and and I still struggle with um, oil paint, the color. Yeah. I mean, I I don't. Um, I think I have a very fine sense of color, mm -hmm. but um, I, I think these look a little bit more like me. Yeah, isn't that yeah. funny? Yeah. That's you better, that's neat. So the last one we're gonna talk about is in the eaves. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Love that, and you know what, you know why? Because you can, you see that all the time, at least I do around my house. Yeah, yeah. You know? Just it's so it's so usual, but then I you just captured it um, so well. Yeah, it is a sense of um, protection and a, a special place. Um, there are no eggs in that one, so mm -hmm. you can imagine um, uh, the nest has just been built or has just been abandoned. Yeah. But that piece started off um, larger, and. Oh, really? Yeah, it did. And um, I put it aside for a while and I came back to it and I said, no, this needs to be more intimate. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, cropped, I actually cropped half of it off. Wow. Well, yeah. It totally yeah. works. I love it. I would say if I was, this is my interpretation. I think the birds have just left because it almost sees when you see a bird's nest and it's, it's abandoned, you know, after the, uh, babies have flown there's little pieces of feathers and that's yes. like, and i don't know whether you meant to do that to me that you know at the top of the um painting it seems yeah. like like the the little feathers that are just left so that's I what people that. can see yeah people can see what they want to that's it <laughs> that's it and they will they always will yeah see what they want to yeah so i am such a fan of your work that I had you uh, work on a commission. I know. It's actually um, 
it, it's in a powder room. And oh, it's yeah, both of them. Room. Yes, it's over um, the toilet. So it's <laughs> kind of hard to see. One of the best places to hang art. You know, people <laughs> at one time or another are going to see it. I love it. Yes. Yeah, so I inherited the frames you know, from the previous owner and I just needed something special. And, um, I just, your work is the only thing in, in my brain. And you know, I have, uh, I know many artists and I wanted you to work on these and I was thrilled with the way it turned out. Well, I was so honored that oh. you asked me to do this and it was a pleasure. And those frames are gorgeous. Aren't they? I, they that's are why I needed something really special. And they're, believe Thank it or not, an odd size. They're not the same size. No, they weren't. Um, and you, the composition of each of them, you know, just totally works. That's why I, I, I handed you the frames and I was just like, you go for it. I know. I, well, I <laughs> Talk about pressure. <laughs> I gave you zero direction. I know you didn't. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just so, I'm just so happy the way they turned out and I get lots of compliments. So that's what I want people to see. And I want people to know that if you have something down the road and you think, Oh, there was an artist over at gallery 222 and only did charcoals, black and whites with a touch of color, you know, that they can always call us, and I will put them in touch with you because, um, yeah, I really feel like people with, with the way things are going, everyone's fixing up their homes. You don't want, you know, art that everybody else has. So, um, and it's not crazy expensive. I think people get leery of, of doing something, um, commission wise. Um, because I feel like you're very reasonably priced. Well, I want people to enjoy the art mm -hmm. and I want, regardless of what they're, uh, what they can afford. You right. know, that's the important thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's great. So I want to thank you for your time, Jeannie. It's always a pleasure talking to you and you know, we need to get this last push to get out to the gallery or go online. Um, we ship everywhere. I handle all that. So, um, but I really, I think your room is really special because it's that black and white. It's dr dramatic and with the white walls. So, um, you know, if you have a pencil to come see the show, do it by Saturday. So, and, and thank, you so thank you. And I want to congratulate you again for your wonderful five years in the gallery. Thank you. Okay, bye. bye. Yeah, we'll see you. Love it. So like I said, I can't say it enough, but please come out and see the show. It's on our walls um, until Saturday. We are open Wednesday today till 5 and then uh, right through till Saturday, 11 to 5. Easy peasy. Um, it's a great show and um, hopefully you can come out and enjoy.